My name is Christopher, and I work in cabin services at Air Canada. I basically get the stuff ready for the planes, for the crew to take out to the planes. So it's the pillows, the blankets, the lab kits for the pilots and crews. I was actually looking for a job, so it was very hard to find a job. I was very happy because uh, when I got the phone call, it was on my birthday. So I'm like, oh, what, a happy, what a good birthday present. <laughs> I'm very happy. Coming into work every day, seeing everybody smiling and seeing, hearing them greet me every day and knowing that there's a job to come to every day. My name is Holly Smy. I manage the Cabin Environment Quality Department in Toronto. I initially had some a, a few worries. Um, I, I worried about how these employees would be treated by my, my employees. Really worrying about anyone picking on each other or bullying or it turned out to be a non-issue, a complete non-issue. The employees were extremely welcoming and, and pulled these two in with open arms. Chris has been a delight from day one. Chris, uh, from day one, came with the most brilliant smile on his face and it hasn't left his face the entire time he's, I've known him working here. He's been a joy to work with. Both Chris and Julian, when I ask them to do something, I show them how I would like something done. The team will show them how they want something done. They do it exactly how it's meant to be done, and they do it happily with so much pride. And the Ready, Willing, and Able program has been um, a wonderful program. I would definitely, without a, a second thought, hire again from the Ready, Willing, and Able program. Just seeing the happiness, how comfortable both Julian and Christopher are in our, our area. They've joined the team without any difficulties. They've just, like, they've been here for the entire time. They're no one special. They're just part of the team. Everybody keeps asking me, why are you always happy, Chris? I'm like, who's one, I have a job. It helps pay the bills, keeps a roof over my head. And two, it's the people that I see every day that I come, when I come into work. I love working here and hopefully to continue more into the years to come. When Marcus was born, which was in 2006, and with all the difficulties with the feeding when he was born, like we were in the hospital for five days when he was born, and uh, trying to get him to feed, and then after that he just vomited all the time, and things had gotten really stressful, uh, then, then he had his diagnosis. We had gone through a rough patch for years and years. It was discussed that he go to foster care because that was our last option. That's all we were ever told, like, because we couldn't live with him anymore. To be honest, our feelings were, we seriously, we, we didn't want to even be on this earth anymore. That's how desperate we were. And, and for Marcus, if he would have went to foster care, that could have been the end of us. We're a family that wants to stay together and wants to, and we've done everything we can to, we fought for everything and they, uh, and to have to finally in the end give up after so many years. He was at this, uh, at the unit and we were approached by uh, a family member um, and then they mentioned that, oh, we have this retreat. Yeah, sure, sign us up. We were going to the retreat and we were very depressed and very, we, we were just fit to be tied with our, with our life, right? Knowing that Marcus was gonna have to go away. We were going to the retreat, but we didn't want to. We just, we didn't even wanna see people, really. We ended up going there and, uh, and that changed our life, like, a great deal. Because when we went there and we met other people that that understood us and 
had been in similar situations and we learned learned that there was this whole other whole other way of living and not have to do the foster care and we learned all about having in-home supports by the end of the weekend we had come up with a plan of how to keep Marcus home without Canadian Association for Community Living we probably wouldn't even be here my name is Marcus Sonnier. I live in Grand Bay Westfield, which is where we are now. I am in grade five, going on grade six in not that long. Tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, you're always a day away. We were very lucky that we got, uh, got into Canada. Hasid was only three years old at the time. Hasid had some difficulty uh, with his speech, uh, some socializing, but we, had, we didn't know what it was. So then we decided to find the placement to get a proper uh, treatment for him. The funding started getting lower and lower instead of higher. Hasid required two-to-one -one staffing, instead it went to one-to-one -one staffing and so Hasid was losing the consistency that he required, lack of the funding and the support. Then, you know, like we decided that uh, we rather find a lawyer and go to the court. I could, or we could only afford one lawyer and we had six lawyers in front of us. And then they said that, uh, Your Honor, if the family is not being given the adequate funding that they require for to take care of their son, why don't you give us the guardianship to us? That was a shocking, shocking, shocking thing that we ever heard because we were dedicated parents. We had to spend our most of the life, you know, like just taking care of him and giving him such a best care we possible. And suddenly our, our, uh, our guardianship was taken away for no reasons. It was the adequate funding that we had required. And our son was also suddenly taken away out of our home into the place in a psychiatric hospital that where he did not belong. He was left in a small little room, confined, secluded, no access to the toilet, no access to the washroom, nothing, in a plastic mattress on the floor. You know, we wanted our son to be released, you know, and we really were not getting anywhere. We tried everything, so we contacted CSEL. Worst situation that they have ever heard and they decided to literally step in. First thing we need to get is guardianship back. I'm not going to rest until I get your son out of this place. After all those struggles, finally we got son, our son home. He comes inside and he looks at the house after 10 and a half years and he, and he said, finally, mommy, I'm home. So without Canadian, uh, Canadian Association of Community Living, I don't think you know, the Hasid would have been free. He would not have been able to come home. And then after, you know, Hasi started traveling, and then we went to Panama Cruise, you know, in Caribbean. And then we went to every hotel, every restaurant, every concerts, every movie theaters, every doctor's office visits. So grateful to see us here. Every night we give him a hug to each other, and he looks at me and he says, Mommy is right beside me. <laughs> 